everyone, it's Nikki Gordon Bloomfield here yes. from Transport Evolved, and uh, I'm just making myself a little coffee here with the Aero Press before I go down into the cold garage and talk to you about what to look for in an electric vehicle charging station. If you haven't had an Aero Press before, you really should consider buying one, especially if you like smooth coffee, like espresso style coffee. And I'm leaning on this for a reason because I'm pushing the coffee down counting inside my head while I do it. These are great. I take them with me when I go on, um, on trips and my grinder fits in the top like that. Isn't that brilliant? Talking of which, uh, James, I hope that you're having fun with your Renault Zoe. I've been watching your progress this week, reviewing the Renault Zoe. Mm. And I've got to say that your complaining about the size of the cup holder was something that I complained about about two years ago when Mark and I had the uh, Renault Zoe for a week uh, over at Transport Evolved in the UK testing it out. We had the same issue, or rather, I had the same issue. Mark just mocked the size of my coffee cup. I don't know if this means I need to talk to someone about my coffee dependence. There. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Now, while I remember, there were a couple of things I forgot to mention yesterday when I was doing the review of the Pugless Power System. Um, and um, I guess I didn't get to show you what the unit looks like when there's not a car above it. So let's have a look now. So you drill holes into the ground and then you put your little locating pins in. This is a special plate to ensure that any power does not go into the, um, into the ground because sometimes garage floors can have um, metal in them so you don't want that so um, that's just like a shielding plate and then this sits on top and then uh, as you can see that's quite happy in the back of the garage but that's not what I want to talk to you about today I want to talk to you today about choosing an electric vehicle charging station for your home now if you have a an electric vehicle the chances are that you have considered buying your own 240 volt charging station for your electric car, especially if you own your own home. Now, the gold standard for that, of course, is to pay a local certified electrician to install a dedicated um, power line to your garage with its own 240 volt supply that you can use exclusively for a charging station for your car. Depending on where you are in the world and depending on which country you're in, you may need a permit for that. I know in certain parts of the US you will. Um, <clears throat> in some parts of the world, it's actually illegal to install your own charging station. Um, but there is a temptation, especially if you rent, to um, use just a standard 110 volt electrical outlet and the slow charging station that came with your car. But here's the thing, most electric cars on the market today come with seven kilowatt onboard charging standard or better. And if you have a dedicated charging station installed in your home, whether it's a DIY install or a professional install, um, you're going to have less risk of damage to your house electronics. Now, using 110 volts like this to charge your car once in a while is not gonna cause any damage. I use this sometimes to charge our Nissan Leaf up if our RAV4 EV is charging because you only have one 240 volt power supply. Um, so we have to switch the two charging stations over. Um, but you shouldn't really rely on this on a regular basis because it's, it's gonna put a lot of strain on your household electrics. So now I've covered the why, we should look at the, what do you look for in a charging station? Now this is a Siemens uh, level two charging station. It's capable of providing up to 7.7 .7 kilowatts to charge a compatible J1772 electric car. Right now we're not using it because obviously we're using the inductive wireless charging system to charge our Nissan Leaf and our Toyota RAV4 EV is currently in the garage having its battery pack looked at. It didn't do too well on that replacement pack we got recently. But the reason why I like this unit is because inside the unit, there's actually a dial and you can dial back the amount of power that this unit will deliver, the maximum amount of power that this unit will deliver. Now, the really nice thing about this particular apartment complex is that one of the features they advertised being townhouses rather than traditional, you know, usual apartments is that they had wiring in the garage for electric vehicle charging. So all I needed to do when I arrived was just plug that into the socket that's just down there, you can't see it. 
And I actually turned the current down on that unit just as a precautionary measure, just to make sure that I didn't um, damage any of the electrics in the house, just to have that extra special precaution, just for my own peace of mind. And to be honest, it's dialed down to, I think, 5.8 kilowatts as opposed to 6.6. .6, and it's doing just fine. There's no real noticeable slowing down of the charging. I mean, it's probably a few minutes longer, but it still charges the car in about three or four hours and we're still able to use it just fine. Now, there are a few other things that you should think about when looking to buy your electric vehicle charging station. One of them is cord length. Now, this is a single car garage. And as you'll note, the charging station is located at the front end of the garage. The reason for that is because we had traditionally preferred to back into our garage because of the shape of the garage. It was just easier to get stuff out of the car because the door to the house is there. But it also means that having it at the front of the garage means we've got enough cable run to run the car cable out to the front, to our front parking space to charge our car if there's somebody else parked in the garage, if I've got the other car in the garage. So you need to think about cable length. If you're the only person who's ever going to use that charging station, then you really need a short cable because it will save on cable clutter. It will lower the risk of you damaging the cable, et cetera, et cetera. If you've got a charging station that needs to be able to reach two parking spaces, maybe three, you need a longer cable. And cable length is normally published alongside the rest of the specifications on the manufacturer website. So I'm going to go upstairs and talk to you about the other features that you might want to look into for an electric vehicle charging station because it's very cold down there. Um, I have a coffee that I need to finish. I can quit any time. Mm. Ah, yeah, I can quit any time, honest. Now, the other thing to bear in mind here is that there are some additional features that come with some more advanced charging stations that you might find useful. The Siemens unit I have downstairs, for example, has the capability to add an external charging control. So if you're into your home automation and you want to be able to turn your charging station on and off remotely rather than using the car's built in timer, because not all cars do have built in timers, then that's a feature that you might be interested in, especially if you're into your home automation and things like the Raspberry Pi. Now, there are some other features coming to market that leverage time of use features and smart grid capabilities to allow you to actually earn money from your local utility company or perhaps charge your vehicle more cheaply. Now, how these work is they have to have an Internet connection, normally through your home network or through a 3G cellular connection that allows the local utility company to communicate with your charging station. And when grid demand gets too high, politely ask your charging station to stop charging your car unless you've overridden that using the smartphone app that comes with the charging station. Alternatively, you can set it so that your charging station actually only charges your vehicle when electricity is the cheapest. And in the future, based on the type of energy generation in your neighbourhood. So, for example, if you live in a neighbourhood with lots of solar panels and suddenly everyone is generating a lot of electricity that's spare, then you could set your car up to only charge when local solar voltaic power is being harvested and put into the grid. One thing to bear in mind here is that it's not always a good idea to go with the charging station that's recommended to you by the dealership where you're buying your car. That's because dealerships and auto manufacturers tend to have partnerships with particular charging station manufacturers. And if history tells us anything, it's that those charging station manufacturers are not always the best, just the cheapest or the ones who got the deal on that day. And you might find that there's a better, more efficient, more cost effective solution that fits your needs better than the unit that's being sold to you by your local dealership. So do your shopping and do your homework before you buy. The other thing to bear in mind is that you should always make sure that you can research local incentives into charging stations. In the UK, for example, there's still a charging station infrastructure program going on right now where you can get a discount on your charging station, either having it installed for free or having it installed at reduced cost. Over here in the US, some states offer incentives on your tax returns, effectively giving you a tax credit, and other states offer you a rebate to help you install a charging station in your home at reduced cost. 
And if you live in certain parts of the US, like California, for example, you could even get a rebate from your utility company to help towards the cost of installing an electric vehicle charging station. But the most important thing here is to make sure that the wiring in your home can cope with the high power demand that you need from your EV. And for that, you're going to need to make sure that your landlord or you, the homeowner, has the electrical circuits that you intend to use for charging your car properly checked out and certified. Yes, it might cost you more in the long run, but if you don't check and it's found that your wiring is not up to par and there's a fire because of it, your insurance company may refuse to pay out. Well, that's really all I have to say on the subject of electric vehicle charging stations. So I'll go and work on putting this video online and then maybe start on 10 for tomorrow, despite it being a slow news week. I think we've got enough to make a decent show for you. So until then, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Thanks for watching and keep evolving. Bye.